Hey guys, got another audio tip for recording your podcast in Logic Pro. Uh, I recently did a video about side chaining, and I've also had some questions about bussing and what bus tracks do. Um, I really only recommend using their bus tracks for side chain, um, but this is kind of going to explain what the bus track is and how it works, and we're going to go over that in this video. So let's say I have a, a track here. Um, what busing does is basically creates a virtual input and output inside of Logic. So it's almost unlimited in how many you can have, but basically just imagine it as you're getting some inputs and outputs inside your computer. Um, so you, it doesn't have anything to do with um, additional mics or additional inputs or anything like that. It's uh, used for effects and it's all happening inside Logic. So let's say... Uh, let's look at the channel strip over here. So your main output is your stereo out. You want to keep it as such. And this is where the audio from any of these tracks is going to go to the master stereo track and then again to your headphones, your speakers, however you're listening to it. Okay. Um, you can also send the audio signals from whatever track you have additional places, and that's what we use buses for. So th these are called sends here on your channel strip. And you have the option to select a bus. Uh, it goes all the way to 64, so you can have 64 buses. Uh, let's just say bus 1. And the input level here is going to start at uh, all the way down, negative infinity. Shortcut to put this back to 0 is hold option and click, and you will be at 0 decibels. So now this, is gonna, this track will be sending input to the stereo out, your headphones, and also to bus one, which is a virtual input and output inside their computer. Uh, let's hit X to open up your mix window. Now you can see whenever we create a bus like this, it's gonna give us a new auxiliary track, which is not an audio track, it's an auxiliary, and the input of that track is bus one. So let me uh, just grab a piece of audio so you can see what's going on here. So, you can see, the bus is sending that same audio signal into this aux track, and it's also sending it out to the main output, as, as you would expect. And if I turn the bus down, the signal to the aux track goes away until it's completely gone. So, this has a lot of uses. What you can do is basically duplicate the audio signal. So, let's say... Uh, if you have a vocal track with a lot of really annoying high frequency that you want to get rid of, you can have your normal uh, effects on the track. Then you can send an aux track, and you can put effects on there to try to squash the high end and put a lot of extra filters or EQ or DSers on that to try to get rid of some of that high end interference that, that you're not liking. Um, ton of uses for that. The main thing that we do, though, is the setup for sidechain. Basically what happens is I want this virtual bus 1 to be active, but I don't want to hear the signal coming through this auxiliary track. So once bus 1 is created, delete the auxiliary track. Delete anyway, yes. And then if you were to add effects anywhere, let's actually create a new track. Let's say I wanted to add effects here. Uh, I'll just go to a compressor. Any effect with a sidechain option, bus one is still active. We just don't have the aux tr track anymore. So I can still select bus one for a sidechain on any compressor. And that's the main use in terms of podcasting. There's no need to get crazily detailed with it because we're not producing music or anything. But um, the bus one will stay active even after you delete the aux track. And that's, uh, that's the main setup for buses.